Started way back in third grade. Said I used to sit beside Emma Lou Hayes. A pink dress, a matching bow, and a ponytail. She'd kiss me on a school bus, but told me not to tell everyone. Oh, what's happening, man? I know it's early, man. It's early, and normally I don't put out these vids until about two weeks before a fight happens. But hey, they've been asking for it. I figured the least I can do is give it to them, right? Right? What? Whatever, man. Crazy. Anyway, hey, it's uh, May 17th, I believe, and it's a uh, Tuesday. Apparently class was canceled, and, well, I figure I might as well do this video. I got no excuse. <laughs> well, this is the uh, prediction video for the July 2nd. Is it July 2nd, man? I'm going to be at a family reunion. I'm going to have to watch it, man. You better have the pay-per-view. Anyway, July 2nd fight between Vladimir Klitschko and David Hay for the IBO, WBO, WBA, IBF heavyweight titles of the world. The WBA title really should be Klitschko's. I mean, Shigaev had the title. Klitschko beat him up. He should have got the title. Anyway, never mind. Never, I'm not getting into it. So, I'll break down both the fighters, and then I'll give my prediction at the end. Will it be different than my prediction I made two years ago for this fight? I don't know. Anyway, Vladimir Klitschko, he's 55 with three losses, no draws, 49 knockouts, an 84% knockout ratio, all against heavyweights. Uh, he is the WBO, IBF, and IBO uh, champion. He's a ring-recognized heavyweight champion. He is in his prime. He is the champion. He also has, did I say champion yet? And he also has one of the longest reigns of a heavyweight champion ever. He is not slowing down. He is one of the smartest fighters out there, meaning... Yeah, you can go ahead and try and fight your fight. He's not going to get suckered into it. He's going to make you fight his. He's got the patience. He's got the skill and ability to do it. He keeps his distance, and he uses that punishing jab with the hook, and then slams that right hand down on you like a sledgehammer. Um, he has good movement. He's great at cutting off the ring. His D is well above average. He has excellent stamina. He is fighting lately with a chip on his shoulder. You saw it with the Eddie Chambers fight, the Samuel Peter fight. A lot of these guys, he is finding, he is catching, he's not letting them go the distance. But in typical Klitschko fashion, they choose to just beat you up for a really long time and then finally break you down and get you out of there in the later rounds. There's no rush in them. They're, they're just as glad pumping your face full of jabs and watching your eyes swell and your nose get all bloody and you swallowing that blood round after round after round as opposed to just laying you out with one shot. Uh, he's not that much of an inside fighter, but then again, with his style, he keeps you away and doesn't allow that to happen. You get close enough, he's going to tie you up. Uh, he has a big heart. He has gotten off the canvas a couple times. So when, when you think about it, he's got the champion's heart. He's got, he's got it now. This isn't the same fighter that fought Brewster way back in 2005. Was 2005? Has it been that long? Anyway, going over to David Hay, who's 25 and 1, 23 knockouts, 88% knockout ratio. It drops to 75% when he fights heavyweights. Just throwing that out there. So there's a significant drop in that. Then again, people say, well, he's only fought four heavyweights. And that is true. And the quality of his opponents at heavyweight weren't that great. You have Monty Barrett. It was okay, but he rocked him. He took Monty Barrett out, though, but he was hurt in that fight. He beat Ruiz. He beat Ruiz worse than just about anybody, save for Tua. Tua got him out in one round, took Hay 9. Uh, you know, and he was 38 year old Ruiz and not a 32 year old like Yoma Tua. Uh, the fixed fight against Harrison, say what you will about it. That was a fixed fight, third round. Time to go now. He goes down. Second round, I don't even know. If I was, it was just painful. And then you had Valuev, a guy that's seven foot tall that fights like he's six foot three. You know, and he, and he beat him. And you saw the uh, increased head movement. You saw him using it. Uh, he has very, very good speed for a heavyweight. And he's got good power for a heavyweight. There's no denying that either. Stamina has to be questioned. And I say that because he's never been pushed in any of his fights at heavyweight. He has always been allowed to fight at his pace, and that helps a fighter tremendously. Uh, the chin, you have to question. People talk about, well, he had weight issues in that fight that he, that he lost, 
and but still he stayed at cruiserweight for two more years typically if when someone claims that they have a weight problem or a problem making weight they don't fight five more fights at that same weight you see what i'm saying they kind of get out of there um he's not active enough as a fighter when you start looking at it with with his fights he's had six fights in the last four years and that you know when you're trying to stay at an elite level i mean even any either of the Klitschko's have had more fights over that amount of time. Any of the champions. Very few people have had less fights than him over the last four years. You know, it's it's uh, just not active enough, so you have to wonder about his, uh, the ring rust or ring generalship in there. You know, when he's talking about picking up experience, I mean, you know, you have uh, Vladimir Klitschko who has double the wins that Hay has in total fights. So that, that, I believe, is going to come into play here. I believe Hay is going to come out strong. He's going to try and get uh, Klitschko out of there fast, all like a uh, Brewster or, you know, well, Sanders eventually knocked him out too. And you're going to see him try to push the pace, you know, just like Peter did. The guys who were able to get to him showed that they could hurt him, but this isn't the same fighter. But the, I still think Hay is going to try to do that. And if there was a knockout for Hay, it's going to come within those first couple rounds. After that you're going to see a complete change. You're going to see Klitschko keeping distance, pumping that jab, doing what he does, and I think Hay finally gasses out around that 10th round or 11th round. I think Klitschko gets him out of there. So if I was, my prediction is going to be a knockout by Klitschko in the, in the 11th round. I, I see Hay getting tired at the end, but it is going to be a very game. It's going to be a very, very good fight to watch. I think Hay has improved on the head movement, which is going to save him eating a couple extra jabs and stuff like that, and he may get inside, but you're going to see Vladimir tie him up the second he gets close, and you're going to see Vladimir keep him on. I see Hay getting frustrated in the fight, wanting to make something happen, and Klitschko not allowing it and just keeping him at distance with those shots. This will be the biggest fighter that Hay's ever been in with, and when I say biggest, he fights the biggest. He fights bigger than Val Valua fights. Valoev does not fight like a seven foot tall man. If he did, nobody would ever get to him. He would hammer you to the earth, but he doesn't fight that way. That is not his style. Um, so in this, I think I've already said it, please comment, rate, subscribe. I got Klitschko by knockout in the 11th round, okay? So hopefully, you know, you know, we'll see how this goes, man. Right, Aguardo? All right. Yeah, yeah. Check yes or no, man. Yeah, hey, clear yes, no. Okay, all right. This is Big Ragu. I'm out.